it felt challenging and not too easy, but still it wasn't as challenging that it became dangerous in any no. in any yeah. way. Just enough. Yeah. Just a little bit scary yeah. sometimes. Yeah, it's so. like out of the comfort zone, <laughs> yeah. not too far. <laughs> this is Cornelius and Hampus. And this is me. Last winter, the three of us went on a five-day skiing adventure in northern Sweden. It all began where these adventures usually begin. At the train station in Stockholm. I had recently been sick and Hampus showed up hungry. But other than that, we were excited and ready to go. Off the train in Abisko stepped three friends in a good mood. Okay, so we're here. Yeah. How are we feeling? Good. Stoked. <laughs> However, they seem to face problems already when leaving the station. Whoa. Luckily, at this point, nothing could stop us. We changed clothes, strapped the sleds on, and started skiing towards Abisbjörn, where we would spend the night, 16 kilometers into the wilderness. thoughts about your sled? So, what I was most worried about was that it would dig into the snow. I silver taped this <laughs> so that the snow would not dig in. I think that's, that's solid, uh, although the biggest problem now is that it's a bit unstable. So like a little push and it kind of like goes to the side. So that might be a problem. At the time, neither of us had a lot of winter trip experience. A lack of experience was made up for with a lot of determination. And to me, there is something beautiful about that. A belief in oneself and a belief in one's ability to solve the situation. I wouldn't go so far as to say we did anything dangerous. Because we did plan and we did think yeah, yeah. about our safety. In this specific case, it just so happened to be that the risks weren't big enough to stand in the way of our dream. Och sen har det varit ganska långt och slitigt att gå. Ja, det var ju inte så lätt som någon av oss väntade sig. Nej, alla har sagt så himla mycket om att det är så lätt att skida. Lite tidsuppfattning och så. Och på henne lät det som att det Men skillnaden vi åker lägg, då åker vi också ganska snabbt. Då kan man åka en mil i timmen liksom. Ja, absolut. Och det var ingen mil i timmen på en mil. Det skulle ha varit i den där nedförsbacken, då kanske det gick en mil i timmen. Men annars, nej. Nej. För de som säger att det är en gift att skida är oftast de som skidar mellan stuga till stuga. Mm. Och nu har vi ju med oss typ dubbelt så mycket packning som man skulle behöva. Vi har ju verkligen varit dumma för vi har ju packat för att sova ute. Mm. Men, Men vi ska mest inte göra det. Nej. Nej. Men sen när vi kommer hit så möter de oss med varm saft. Oh. Och vi är ensamma i ett, vad var det, 14 beds. 28 bilar. Alltså, Två gånger 14. Mm. Det känns lyxigt. Mm. Cornelius är varm. Emma är kall. Jag är varm. Det är två mot en. Yeah. Solen skiner så det ser ju varmt ut men det hade varit intressant att veta vad det är för temperatur. Mm. Det skulle vara mellan minus 3 och minus 20 grader. Ja. Minus 15 då. 
So today it's day two and we're going from Abuskuyare to another hut called Una Alakas. And I think we kind of underestimated how much time it takes skiing, especially with a sled. And we have quite heavy backpacks and yeah, like we packed a lot of stuff because we might want to build a snow cave, but we might not have a good spot to do it. So like, yeah, there's a whole lot of maybes. So we got a whole lot of packing, which slows us down a little bit. But today is a beautiful day. And yeah, we're just enjoying it because it's great. How are you doing, sir? Uh, I'm extremely tired, actually. We wake up and the weather is fantastic, but we have longer, a longer trek to take. So it's 21 kilometers yesterday and 16 the day before. <sighs> I think we underestimated how heavy it is to pull the sleds. I'm just going to interrupt Cornelius right there. I think it's time to tell you a little bit more about our sleds that we named the plow and the anchor. I'm gonna start with the plow. <laughs> yeah. Oh. What's the story about that? It's an online plow that was fairly <laughs> cheap and very old. Basically searching for like the cheapest, yeah. uh, most fun, okay Yeah, functioning. Sledge. And we got that at like 10% of the price. Oh, well, that's good, but also you end up paying for it in comfort and usability and all that stuff. Yeah, it was fun because when we came to the first hut, it, would act, it was actually like displayed on the wall. In the good old days, <laughs> you had this. And then it's exactly ours. Yeah, we were like, <laughs> yeah, going, great. This is not <laughs> and then there was like some old guy passing by and he was like, oh, this is the best one there is. And back in my day, he just started yeah, going. <laughs> all right, man. <laughs> But then there's also like the anchor. Yeah, so, so the story about the anchor is that... So Hampus is a fireman to yeah, start with. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I kind of asked around at work and we had this thing that hasn't really been used and just stands there. So I asked if I could borrow it and of course I could. So I kind of rebuilt it to at least make it don't plow as much snow as it would have. Yeah, it were it worked, <laughs> but it was slowing us down quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. It's like digging itself down in the ground. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was fine when it was flat, but yeah. Yeah. Not so much in the deep snow. Mm -mm. So we got a lot of gains from that. Yep. <laughs> yep. It's good to learn like this, I think, because mm. the weather's been good enough for us to make all these stupid mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So it's like been actually a perfect and it's also nice because when we have like a proper one, then we will really appreciate it because mm. we know what it is to not have one. Yeah. Knowing that, let us continue. What were you saying again, Cornelius? And either way, towards the end, we were hungry and it, the wind was picking up and the weather was... So that we got here after having to put on our torches, our headlights, because it was getting too dark. And we were cold and hungry, we didn't bring enough hot food and... Yeah, all this stuff, normal stuff we do. <laughs> yeah, so we just woke up today almost feeling hungover from the cold and the... the hard skiing. So now, today we decided to stay here and just relax so we'll see what the day brings
Usually when I'm going somewhere, my focus is on the goal, the destination. Lately, I've been trying to focus less on the goal and more on the journey. Before this, I had never taken a rest day while being out. I've been to so many beautiful places and never have I ever taken the time to just stop, stay and take in. There's so much more to a place than what my brain manages to notice while passing by. I will definitely have more rest days in the future. All good things must come to an end, even this adventure. <laughs> From here on, we had two days of skiing back the way we came. At this point, we had sort of gotten into the rhythm of skiing. We had a lot of downhill sprinkled with great weather. Our bodies had adapted to both the terrain and the packing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Och så är man liksom inte uppe först pulken är uppe heller. As you can tell, it was hard not having a good time. to get back to civilization. It's been uh, enough. <laughs> <laughs> Did you that this was I guess what I'm trying to say with this video is follow your dreams and be safe. Don't get too obsessed with that dream so you forget about the now. At the end of the day, it's not about what we've done. It's about how the things we've done made us feel. And a lot of the time, all we need is some contrast. And you see, that's what I love about the Swedish mountains. When everyday life gets overwhelming, I know that they are waiting for me.